We are back here in the final segment of our program, The Platform, this evening as we continue to talk about 50 years of tourism in the Bahamas. Uh, David Johnson, our guest on the program today, and um, the cruise industry has really caused a major shift um, in terms of how we do tourism uh, in the Bahamas, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Um it is a form of tourism, but we should view it as incremental business, mm. incremental to our core business. And if we have that perspective, we can get it to work for us. It's like the food store. When you go in there, at the checkout counter, there are some very profitable items that they don't just spend a lot of money to market sitting there. You might pay. Uh, 75 cents or a dollar for them. They have the highest margins. It's incremental. You've got a few change of dollars, it's right there, you, you throw it in. That is not, um, that's not, that's 25% of our business in terms of the value that we spend, we should spend very little effort and invest against because it's there. So our, the majority of our revenue would come from uh, stopover visitors. No question, that drives yes. our employment. Yes, um, the cruise industry uh, is a bonus for us, yes. even though we get more numbers from the cruise uh, Exactly, industry. it is It is a bonus, you put it properly. It is a bonus, it's incremental too. We didn't have to build a lot of hotels, incur a lot of risk to receive it. We need to manage it so that it works for us and that it works to help influence um, core business, that is, persons coming as a result of the experience, will add to our stopover visit account in subsequent trips. Mm. Okay. Um, have we been too focused on, on numbers in terms of overall numbers of visitors arriving to the Bahamas uh, and, and not really concerned about uh, the revenue that we have been uh, gaining as a country from uh, tourism? No question as a country we have. Uh, I think we suffer from uh, explaining our performance in ways that the average person generally can uh, appreciate, that is, what's the count. Uh, it's a little more difficult to explain the underpinning um, economic um, uh, um, 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 consequences, uh, uh, the comparisons of a visitor who stays in a hotel or a visitor who stays in a family island for 14 nights. And, and so we talk about how many arrivals. I, I think to some extent that's been a disservice to many of us in tourism um, that we may be looking at the wrong things. Mm -hmm. David Johnson, let's talk a little bit about family island development um, and the uh, extent to which we are getting visitors uh, into our family islands. Uh, I had uh, an occasion to be in Providencialis or a few times, and um, I saw European visitors in beaches and other places in uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands. They spend a longer period of time. Uh, have we uh, neglected the European market or discounted the length of time these people would stay in our country? Well, Randa, let me tell you a reality about business. Rather than have one person in my hotel um, with one wallet who stays three weeks. As a business, I'm better off having four persons staying an average of five nights with uh, fresh wallet. That's going to generate a much more revenue for me. Is that right? And the country. Plus, there'll be four persons paying head tax, four persons taking four taxi round trips. So let's not n n keep our eye on the eight ball. It's mm. about the income and the revenue. Mm. So the turnover is what a business wants. That's not, that's not to say there's not value in diversification. And the length of time people stay. Uh, it, it, isn't it better to have The length of time is valuable if I'm comparing someone staying seven hours versus three weeks. But if I got guests who are staying four or five nights with fresh wallets, and every four nights I get a fresh guest, you run a hotel, you'll see that means a lot more to you. Mm. Because when they come, same with cruise lines will tell you, when they come for a week or more, you watch the spend, they're only going to go out and have an elaborate dinner where they 
have a hundred dollar bottle of wine one night. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're better off having um, that turnover because you're going to get that elaborate meal every four nights. They come for three weeks, you get it once. So uh, from a business perspective, let's not get carried away. One person staying three weeks is going to spend less than three parties, that is, or three couples within that three weeks with one every week I'm getting a turnover or every four or five nights. But you're talking about diversification. I don't want to confuse value with diversification. Right. I should not have all my eggs in one basket. Okay. Uh, sometimes we neglect to give uh, the credit to uh, some of these resorts in the family islands and their contributions to uh, tourism uh, generally in the country. Fernandez Bay and Cat Island, Pink Sands and Harbor Island places in the Abacos. Uh, let's speak to that and the value of these um, uh, organizations, these resorts to our development. Randall, uh I, for one, believe that it should be a priority of, of ours as a country to ensure and to pay a lot more attention to, because we're not paying enough attention to, the smaller boutique resorts in our family islands um, and encourage and ensure that they thrive and there are more of them. Uh, they develop and they create an experience where they have about a 70% repeat visitor Radio, Rachel. They they also they also uh, um, spend more, mm -hmm. and they also get attached to the destination in ways that they may invest otherwise. Many of the persons who own small hotels in the Family Islands, they were visitors who fell in love with the destination and invested. That's the kind of stability, and that's the sort of a commitment that you need that they try to overcome. Power costs that are much higher in the, in, the, in the capital. No air transportation, but they stick with it and they work so much harder to make their business work. We need now to facilitate uh, better infrastructure that they will thrive and more Bahamians will invest. That's very difficult today and many of our islands is very difficult um, for the person who is without the passion and the commitment to invest in the sector, but we need it. So we have, in my view, not undervalued, but we have not invested the amount of time and effort. My focus in particular is more on the, al the other islands of the Bahamas than what we've already developed here. In order for these boutique hotels to really survive and to, to thrive, uh, you need uh, a better airlift, uh, isn't that right? Um, as a matter no of fact, question. you need more airlifts for uh, New Providence uh, 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 as well, and Grand Bahama, but the family islands in particular, isn't that right? Yes. Um, we need to fix the internal air transportation system in the Bahamas. Uh, n these islands will never have, not in your and my time, uh, the ability to support large or modern jets coming nonstop. But they're all within mostly 40 minutes or less of this same airport we have called um, LPI. And um, we need to make it a true hub so that you can effortlessly, when you land in Nassau, if your onward destination is Rock Sound or Marsh Harbor or Georgetown, you have a convenient connection within an hour and a half. And when you're returning, that is great for this country. First of all, that customer is going to spend with us about $40 a passenger um, um, user fee at an airport we need to pay for called, called Nassau rather than they're coming through Florida to get to those islands. Uh, two, they get a much lower airfare because the round trip from Florida to those islands is like five and six hundred dollars. The round trip from Nassau is less than hundred and eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing down by forty percent the cost to get there. Uh, you're transferring within a destination where it's domestic. So it's, today now you can walk once you clear, right to the next counter, um, um, international, um, domestic. So we have a great opportunity now to make that LPI work for us and create a connecting hub where the cost to and the time to get to these destinations goes down. It's right here now, but we need to fix 
the mindset of those operating services. The Bahamas Air, the Sky, the Westerns, the Flamingos, we need to get their flights in the systems where someone can see them from where they are at home and book them. And two, that they integrate their schedule so that tourism influence uh, connecting flights to those islands. That can be done. Listening to you, we, we, we seem not to uh, been able to keep pace uh, with the challenges of the 21st century or tourism development uh, for a 21st century Bahamas. Am I right? We have lagged behind, no question. You're right. Uh, we have not to date. Uh, we need to, to catch up. We're not alone within the Caribbean, but that's not an excuse. We've been at it. Uh, we understand what needs to be done. And if we are going to, to uh, have a thriving and, to, uh, uh, and growing tourism sector outside of New Providence and Grand Bahama, these are the prerequisites. And uh, they are being attended to uh, by I can say comfortably uh, that um, I'm working with my colleagues in, in Bahamas Air and the Ministry of Tourism. We have, this is an agenda we share that the government of the Bahamas endorses, and we're now working at it to get it done in as short as possible time frame. Tell us about your, your stint as uh, Director General in these closing uh, minutes of the program. Um, you've been there uh, in many departments in the Ministry of Tourism, but you uh, were Director General for a little while. Yes. Um, I changed the focus somewhat of the Director General when I became Director General because I came, became Director General at a different time. I came, became Director General when we were still not yet recovering from the worst recession we've ever seen in our lifetime, when investment had dried up, where the most profitable resorts in the Bahamas were losing money and bankrupt, like the one across the street. Uh, and um, uh, I realized that if I focused mm -hmm. on simply promoting a destination that was not competitive, with products that were not winning, yes, I'll justify the spend, but I'll see no result. Uh, my focus was to find ways to bring, breathe life into parts of the Bahamas. I had a particular affection for Grand Bahama. Uh, I did not accept that Grand Bahama could not be made to work. Uh, and uh, I made a threat that, uh, that has been realized, or a promise, that Grand Bahama this year, I said it a year and a half ago, would be the fastest growing destination in the Bahamas. It is. It's growing at a 33% rate. Right now it is? Right now it is. All year it has been. Uh, why? Because we found strategic partners to work with us, and the government has been receptive to it. And a hotel that was closed for two years is now the top performing hotel in Grand Bahama and among the most, the best performing hotels in the country of its size. What is that? That's the old Holiday Inn, as you know it, that became the Reef, that is now Memories, mm. operated by a group called Blue Diamond Hotels, uh, owned by a company called Sunwing um, Holidays. They're an integrated company. They have 22 jets in their fleet. They're flying flights to Grand Bahama this winter from cities like Vancouver nonstop, Calgary nonstop, Winnipeg nonstop, Ottawa nonstop, and of course Toronto and Montreal. It's all about finding the right partners, creating the opportunity where there's win-win. That's only the first step. We're already down the road to agreeing on an expansion of that activity in Grand Bahama. I think Grand Bahama future tourism in the next 15 years, I'm saying it today, that the country will see that it's going to be secured for the next 15 years. And overall, for the Bahamas, you are very optimistic. I'm very optimistic. For our growth, eh? Very optimistic. We're taking the same approach elsewhere. Exuma like is, is a very interesting proposition for us. It's perhaps one of the um, most attractive destinations in the, in the world for tourism. And we have not begun yet, practically. So I'm very optimistic. I think this country has its opportunities mostly ahead of it. Yes, we live and see Nassau. Uh, NASA is our cash cow. We have a very challenging year ahead of us, but I think the opportunity to focus on the experience and not simply believe that erecting buildings is going to cure our tourism. It's the experience. 
they're going to sleep somewhere. But let's fix the experience. Thank you so very much, David Johnson. Randall, Appreciate always good it. to Thank see you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so very much for watching and listening to our program, getting the perspective from a veteran like David Johnson in the tourism industry. Thank you. Good evening, everyone.